either of you gentlemen anything to discuss before the unofficial arrival of our illustrious founder? Well, not a bit of good needling me, John. I don't know what father wants. And I'm still punch drunk after a week with the accountants. John? Well, no idea. Very furtive. On parole from the National Export Board? If Caswell has something to discuss which can't go on an agenda, at least he could be punctual. Yes? Mr. Van Meeren is on the line speaking for Dr. Freeling. He's calling from Italy and says it's extremely urgent. Right, put him on. Hello? What? Yes, of course I can hear you. This is Wilder speaking. I'm damned if I can. Not without a very good reason. Look, Van Meeren, you don't tell me I'd better do anything. What? I'll be on the plane tonight. Miss Ingard? Yes, Sir John. I want a seat on the seven o'clock plane for Rome tonight. Uh, I'll collect the ticket at the airport. Phone CT, say I want a car and a driver. I'll be staying at the albergo. Yes, Sir John. Make suitable excusatory noises to Caswell for me. Tell him I've got some really important business to do. Well, he may like details. I would. So would I. Except for a quotation for a vast sum of money. Oh. Join a consortium and see the world. I mean, this could be interesting. Anything is, apart from their mutual mistrust, that can make Wilder and Van Meeren jump like scalded cats. Well, watch and pray, Kenneth. It's your money. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. The objective, Henderson. I don't understand the delay, Mr. Van Meeren. Until you build the trunk road, the existing road is perfectly adequate for service vehicles. The new highway can run alongside it. A tourist centre can be built here, based on the existing village, almost immediately. Hotels, luxury flats, beaches. You must write the brochure. An admirable piece of planning. Obvious, but admirable. Then I can go ahead with the detailed drawings. Not for the moment, Mr. Bennett. I don't think that you can overrule me. I am, after all, planner to the consortium. And I'm its financial controller, with full authority from Freeling and the consortium board. Who need Contini's support. Senior Contini is very enthusiastic about this part of the project. He would be. It is the flesh and glamour he can take political credit for. Nobody ever got votes from a sewage farm. But I hope you'll be as frank with him. Ask him. He's your father, you know. I shall certainly have to tell him about the delay and the lack of reason for it. It's my responsibility as planner to the consortium. A privileged position in more ways than one. I know why John went. One ten-second telephone call from Van Meer and he was off. International panic. Yeah, Van Meer doesn't panic. As you know, unlike your Africans. Yeah, well, the character analysis is fascinating, but I have an appointment in ten minutes. I won't take long. I want Blythe to endow a chair in civil engineering at Garford University. You fought. I'm not repeating it, Ken. You heard. Out of income or capital? Capital, of course. Oh, of course. Fine. Yeah, let's pay off the national debt while you're at it. Don, I wonder if you'd mind... No, I'd over. prefer Don to stay. Hmm, very well. Your public spirit does you credit. Of course, it costs us money for you to be at the NEB, but um, you helped to make that money. But this, a chair at... Ah, oh, give up. Do you know how much it'll cost? About 50,000 pounds to start. Oh, well, that isn't public spirit anymore. It's paranoia. Look, if you want a doctorate and fancy robes, you can buy them a downside cheaper than 50,000. No, no fancy robes. I want to endow a chair in civil engineering at Garford. Now, we take a lot out of this industry. Let's put something back. Yes, and burnish your reputation in the process. No, Father, this is an empty, expensive gesture which we can't afford. Well, nobody asked me, and it looks like a private fight. You're right, keep out of it. I was asked to stay, Kenneth, and this peevish child act is what I can do without. I don't care what your father's motives are. 
I think he might have a good idea. Look, good, you pay for it. Well, I am doing. Look, we're losing professional men at the rate of one a month to Canada, America, Australia. They've had this country. Yes, it's costing us about 600 quid in management consultant fees and training time to replace every one of them. Uh, we could use a good recruiting post at one of the universities. Is that your motive? To be honest? <laughs> Not entirely. All right, I'll, I'll simmer down. Sorry, Don. Though he may be the greatest idea since penicillin, but there's one snag, we can't afford it. I'm telling you. Oh. All right, if you don't believe me, ask the accountants. Ask John Wilder. We're stretched to the limit. So, there it is. John asked me to apologize and helped you like cribbage. Perhaps he's worried about my blood pressure. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. But if you are, there's a machine in the bathroom where you can test it. No, really? Yes, he's been reading those American <laughs> business magazines again. The complete 20th century executive. With a touch of Batman, he whizzes in, picks up his overnight bag, which leaves permanently in the hall, and in 20 minutes he's halfway to Rome. You should have gone with him. Interpreter. We may help Henderson with recruiting, but this chair's mostly image building, Father, and you know it. A blight chair in civil engineering also establishes an attitude. You've always disliked academics. <laughs> well, I still do. But now I need some of them on my side for the National Export Board. My change of heart has to be made public. Well, not at this price, it doesn't. Mm, that's something I want to discuss in detail. <laughs> Note the word, Kenneth. Discuss. Three months ago, I'd have rammed it down your throat and Wilder's. Well, you made the choice. Blythe's were the NEB and you chose politics. I'm left with the sordid commercial donkey work. And on the subject of money, I have things to discuss, too. Oh, good. Saturday tomorrow, I'll come over. I haven't seen Justine and the children for some time. I, um, I prefer it to be at the office. Because Justine will invite me to lunch and the children might like a walk afterwards and I might stay to dinner. Don't worry, it's NEB business. I'll only want an hour of your valuable commercial time. I don't like aeroplanes, Henry. I never have done. Nor do I like bumpy roads or crises at short notice. Covey? No? An explanation. Before you can build anything, you have to buy land to build it on. That's what lawyers are for. For political reasons. A tourist development is phase one of the project, and every key site has already been bought. Good, but not by us. And by whom? I'm hoping you can tell me. We have an allowance of 100,000 pounds in the contract for land acquisition in phase one. What are they asking? A quarter of a million. And who are they? A company called Land Enterprises, based in London. Perhaps you can persuade them to come down. I don't know anything about them. They are lawyer intimated you did. And it's a fact that the land was bought cheaply by someone who knew what was going to happen to it. Your move, John. It's nothing to do with me. I don't know any land enterprises. Who else can it be? The company's bank and solicitors are identical with yours. Oh, anybody could find that out. It's in the records. Too much coincidence and too much money. The last time. I know nothing about it. I hope you can prove it. If this speculation is not yours, a lot of trouble has been taken to link you with it. I'm not an English gentleman. If it is yours, it invalidates the entire consortium contract. You're out and Blyze are out. No one's blaming you for not knowing the present financial situation. We're in a squeeze. We can't subsidize your Elder Statesman Act. I need that, Chair. It's important to me, not just for prestige. I need a precedent. Then I want the NEB to tout industry to follow it up. Chairs in business efficiency, management, market research. To give you the facts to back up NEB policy. Mm, all right, that too. Well, laudable but impossible. Look, costs are up 15% in a year. 
were being strangled with taxes. I'm going frantic looking for operating economies, and you expect us to play Lady Bountiful. I've heard about your operating economies. I had a note from Sawbridge telling me that you'd cancelled my Bly subscription to party funds after that agreement. Little pay for an assistant manager and two secretaries. That's how pushed we are. A bit petty, isn't it? Have you cancelled yours? Anyway, yours are unnecessary now. Your promised land's arrived. <laughs> Ah, uh, the indolent society. Well, there's no incentive to work 14 hours a day rather than six because the rewards are the same, and we can all live like bus drivers. Better than the old days, when 10% of the country skimmed the cream and the rest starved. Now, come off it, Kiahad. He's dead, so's the age he lived in. Look, you're chairman of the NEB, fine. But I still have to run the business you built. And I'll do it. No sentiment, no hearts and flowers. No party subscriptions, and no chairs at universities. I think that's how you'd do it if you still had my job. <laughs> Come on, let's go into lunch before Justine drags us in. I'm sorry to trouble you at home, Miss Lingard, but I want you to do something for me. In my private book in the office, you'll find the phone number of a Mr. Edward Luke. I want you to ring him and get him to meet me on Monday evening. No, not at the office. He knows my home address. I want him to bring with him everything he knows or can possibly find out about a company called Land Enterprises. Yes. Yes, he'll know what it's about. It's his job. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm almost beginning to believe you. It's been rather disappointing for you within reaching distance of a major share of the consortium. Did I ever tell you about the firm that advertised for a one-armed accountant because the chairman got sick and tired of someone saying, on the one hand you can do this, on the other hand you can do the other? Hmm? Well, when in doubt, act. We'll change the whole plan. Then every bit of land Land Enterprises owns will be worthless. Right. Ask Mr. Bennett to come in, please. I'll get a site and design team out of from Bly's next Monday. That won't be necessary. We can use either one of these three villages. Did you have a key to this thing? In the safe. Bennett has the other. Ah. Now we know who Land Enterprises is. Good morning. Hello, Sir John. Nice to see you again. Briefly, you're fired. So start gathering together your colored pencils and your set squares. Uh, Look, you minute. dragged me into this. Let me handle it. You have no authority to dismiss me. I was appointed by Signor Contini. Don't start waving your father-in-law at me. We pay the bills. I demand a reason. You couldn't demand a breath of fresh air in this room. But I will give you reasons. Unprofessional conduct, speculation and greed. Now, get out. This isn't England, Wilder. Somebody should tell him who I am. How can you be sure it's Bennett? I can't. Edward Luke will tell me on Monday. It isn't me and it isn't you. We would have taken a quiet, reasonable profit. This is a greedy amateur job. It must be Bennett. If it is, it could be Contini's idea. A kickback for political services rendered. Perhaps we've been too drastic. When my head's on the block, I'm always drastic. And if it is Contini, the price is still too high. He could still wreck the consortium. You don't gamble with men like Contini. I'm not gambling. With a quarter of a million stakes and the cards stacked against me, when that happens, you kick over the table. It's always cheaper to buy a new table. Good afternoon. Pleasant trip. Do I call it that? It's quicker. No, like that. Precisely. I got your message. Hmm? 
Um, well, it's out of the question, I'm afraid. You can't lift one of our best design and survey teams at a moment's notice. I can't. Well, not without a good reason. The best. Money. I've just sacked the last planner for a land-buying sideline which could have cost us £150,000. Not my problem, John. The consortium's a separate project. Only operationally. Not financially. If we take a loss on this land grabbing, it's your money. You're quibbling over peanuts, Kenneth. The costs of a planning team. Oh, about 10,000. Uh, fair salaries, lots of overheads. Oh, get your clutch of the petty cash. Look at the real figures. You're taking a risk, aren't you? If this team's under your supervision? They can accuse me of speculation, that's quite right. But there'll be no speculation. I had lunch with Caswell. He met me at the airport. If you let me have my planning team, I'm anti-university chairs. <laughs> You're getting crude. I'm in a hurry. Well, all our survey teams are busy. And we just lost Harwell. I've heard Don's sob story about the emigration to plusher parts. Raymond's still here with us, isn't he? Dreaming of council houses and bigger bingo parlours. Ah, well, Raymond's around. Kenneth, special. you've no choice if you're really worried about money. You are in a hurry, aren't you? I want everything fixed before any more smart customers start buying land. Yes? Mr. Van Meeren for you. Oh, put him on, will you? Uh, he's here, Sir John. Oh, well, show him in. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Van Mirren. I must apologize for the unexpected arrival. More trouble? Yes. If you don't mind, Kenneth. No, I'd be delighted to help. Consortium problems are Bly problems, as you've just pointed out. Contini is on his way to London. I just had a telephone message from his personal assistant. Confused but threatening. Outraged dignity, a slur on his son-in-law's honesty, etc. Pointless. Bennett is involved. I hope you're sure of that. He has to be. Contini will have to find some other way of looking after his daughter's old age. What else? Reconsideration of his support for the consortium. Too late. I wish I shared your optimism. One of John's more endearing qualities. I can stop Contini. That is not optimism. It's fact. Not worth the price of your airfare. This might be. Sir John has explained, I believe, that we can develop one of three villages as a major tourist resort. Any one, depending on the plans. And what's this? The name of two companies? Both of which have bought land in all three villages. These. Small sites, but key ones. More vultures, John. I wonder who told them where the pickings were. I do hope John doesn't keep you waiting too long, Mr. Luke. Punctuality isn't one of his vices. Thank you. Well, I'm a little early anyway. A cautious driver, as usually are. And you have a patient face. <laughs> Still, you'll need it. Uh, John said you were uh, some kind of a policeman. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was. Uh, not anymore. Oh, I don't blame you. Must be dreadful rushing around, sirens wailing, wrestling with criminals. Must be very tiring. Uh, well, I was in the fraud squad, actually. We wrestled with sets of ledgers, mostly. Oh, dear. I do hope John hasn't found somebody cooking the books again. Well, if he has, Lady Wilder, uh, I feel sure he'll tell you everything he wants you to know. Squelch. Mind my own business. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hope I'm not putting you out. Not a bit now, now. I'm glad of the chance to give you dinner. Pity John couldn't join us. Yes, in a way. Though at times of crisis... Oh, he thrives on crisis. I prefer routine myself. Contini's friendship, for example. If you're prepared to buy it. Not us. Blies. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Edward. Oh, well, we've had a most interesting discussion on the profit motive. In theoretical terms. Well, Pamela's version of that is to get hold of a handful of 
charge accounts and see which one she can reach the roof with first. <laughs> oh, don't be patronising. You've seen my dividend statements. Men don't have a monopoly of business brains. Luck. I thought you were going out. I am. You know, you'll be installing one of those little boxes in here soon and buzzing for Miss Lingard. I won't be late. Goodbye, Mr. Luke. Lady Barbara. Oh. Well, who's running land enterprises? Bennett's idiot up to his greedy little elbows. Ah. Good. Thank you, Edward. It was registered four months ago as a trading venture on an old company. A couple of clumsy trust deeds and a bogus transfer show some effort at concealment, but doesn't need much digging to find Bennett as the principal. Very amateur indeed. Well, that takes care of problem number one, and that's all in here. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. um, uh, and if you need it, the currency transfer wouldn't bear much looking into. Oh, uh, none of my business, of course, not now. I don't lose heart yet. Look at this. Two companies. One based in Liechtenstein, one in Switzerland. Both buying land where we want it. Mm. Cheap and strategically. Well, I can get at uh, Liechtenstein, but uh, nobody cracks the Swiss. Not officially. I take it you're in a hurry. That is an understatement. Well, the best way is to start at the buying end, then. Can I have the locations of these sites? Quickest way, get the public notaries, town clerk, see who's paying the road tax now. Thank you. You know, I once had a stock exchange case, two partners agreeing to split up. The waiter who served them at lunch with a disgusted made 15,000 pounds. We don't want any of your parables, Edward. What do you want? You won't like it. Nobody does. I already have in my briefcase names and photographs of anybody who could have any inkling of where we're buying land. You know, I enjoy working with you, Sir John. Not the slightest bit of good having suspicions unless one is practical about it. Uh, dear Signor Contini, I know exactly how you feel. I had thought Wilder capable of discretion. Instead, he blundered around like some Peasant in a market, trying to get the best price for his pig. You mentioned speculation. Suspicion of it. And if it's true? This is irrelevant. It was my problem to solve, not Wilder's. He can reinstate my son-in-law with a full and formal apology, or I drop the consortium. Yes, I'd hoped it might be too late for that. Perhaps you're right. Not drop it. Actively oppose it. An energetic recantation is always effective politics. Yes, I'd rather you didn't. The treasury is fairly heavily committed in a number of ways. I regret this, but I've no choice. If Wilder thinks I can be dismissed as easily and lightly as this, what valuation can he place on my support, hmm? I'm sorry, Charles. Think about it. I have done. I'm seeing Wilder tomorrow. And I shall then go back to Italy and Break the consortium into small pieces. Hello, Pamela. Hello. Lady Wilder, Signor Eduardo Conti. Delighted. We've been discussing your husband. As I imagine, in most business circles, he's good for a diatribe or two. Uh, I am primarily a politician. There, too. I sometimes wish John could tell the difference. So do I, Lady Wilder. So we must go, Eduardo. Thank you for seeing me. A great pleasure, Charles, as always. I'm sorry we couldn't look forward to a longer acquaintance. Charles, thank you for your concern. But I'm not exactly the village idiot. And I have no intention of letting Contini crack his feudal whip over me. Yes, I'm perfectly aware of what I'm doing. Thank you. And thank you for the briefing of whatever you treasury gentlemen call tips. Land troubles are here. Always happens abroad. You make it sound like tourist stomach. Well, isn't it? Debilitating, unpleasant. Not if you deal with one outbreak at a time. I'm uh, sorry about your university chair, Caswell. But really, I think that's Kenneth's pigeon. Yes, he told me you'd say that. 
It's nice to be able to shift the blame for once. Now, I'll get that chair one way or another. But I do wish I could help. Oh, you might yet. You never know. Ah, oh, John. Ah, oh, Caswell, I hope you still be here. Do use my office. <laughs> well, uh, any news of the university? Not much. Always the same. People with alphabets after their names have suspicious minds. It's that small print in all those footnotes they have to read. I'm still working at it. We get there. Wherever there's land development, there are always vultures. There are such things as reasonable vultures. Those you can do business with. Your son-in-law was unreasonable. His loss. And yours. I'm breaking up the consortium. Oh, no, you're not. You can't stop me. I can, and will. One of the advantages of being in business and not in politics is that you're not worried about public opinion. I'm in it for profit, not glory. The mercenary's creed. Yes. And honor. Oh, let's cut out the charade, Contini. The proof of Bennett's guilt is in that folder, cast iron. And since you're talking about honor, wasn't it your idea in the first place? No. Who'd believe you? None of your political enemies. And damn few of your political friends. Ah, the crude way. If I withdraw support from the consortium, you will, discreetly, of course, leak the contents of that folder and intimate that I was behind the speculation. <laughs> no, no, I'm not so cautious. I produce that folder as proof of Bennett's guilt. And then I let the people make up their own minds about your association with it. Democracy. You think I'll support you on these grubby terms? No one gave you any terms. Perhaps a little advice. Go back to Italy, take that folder with you. Call a press conference and announce that you, the incorruptible Signor Contini, has booted his own son-in-law because he has sticky fingers. Then go back to your house and put a high polish on your honorable coat of arms and your reputation. I could always withdraw support from the consortium later. Having acted as public guardian of its financial morals, I doubt it. Ingenious. Why should you acquiesce in this course of action? Uh, put it down to trust and a sense of fair play. Hmm? I don't care if you get political kudos up to your neck, so long as both of us know who's running the business end of it. I shall be returning to Italy this afternoon. Well? Well, Contini and I are still blood brothers. For how long? Read the Italian newspapers the day after tomorrow. You didn't talk personal, Finanza Hope. I've already had one warning from you, Hendrik, about what would happen if I'm caught rigging land deals. One is enough. Remember that. I only asked a simple question. With a very unsimple motive. I have a responsibility to my own company, just as you have to yours. Hours. So stop watching me. You're in the wrong business, Hendrik. You ought to have been a ferret. All right, Bissett. Five languages. Are all policemen as clever? I'm not a policeman anymore. I'm an investment consultant. <laughs> First time I've ever heard of John consulting anybody. <laughs> well, it's a bit high sounding, I must admit. It's a job. Yes, but. What does it all really mean? Anything anybody wants it to mean. Most of the time. Squelch again. <laughs> oh, Edward. Mm. Hello. Oh, quick. Hello. Well, I was lucky. Well? Well, I must go and lie on my yoga horse. The blood rushes straight to your head and gives you spiritual thought. Have some for me while you're at it. It cost rather a lot of money. Sound clerks have gone up in price. Who? 
is running these two companies? I don't know. They're very well covered. Some nice tricky paperwork, bank officer registration. That's not of much use. However, the two companies are entirely separate, not connected in any way. And I do know who did the negotiating. Who? Oh. Well, come on. Don Henderson. And your wife. Father's taking it quietly. Yes, yes, I suppose he is. I can see the subject fascinates you. Lord? Never mind. Yes? Your call to Mr. Edward Luke. Put him straight through, will you? Edward, I want you to go back to I Italy. Yes, this very minute. Hey, steady on, John. What? Well, not running a free travel agency. All work to date to be billed to Bly's. This present trip to be sent for my personal settlement. You've got a map of the area, haven't you? Now, I want details of every piece of land that has changed hands there in any way. Not only the tourist area, anywhere. All right, Edward. You'll cable me, won't you? Well, you obviously have other things on your mind, so I won't bother you with the few millions we have in contracts in this country. Priorities, Kenneth. This is no time to start counting pennibs. Yes? Mr. Henderson on the line from Stroud. Put him on, will you? Don, good morning. A round of golf this afternoon at three o'clock. Yes, today. Well, catch a train. Fly, walk. I know you're very busy. Yes, three o'clock. And be there. Hmm. Yes, the fresh air might help me to ventilate a few problems. They tell me golf is quite a release for the suppressed emotions. So I do some of my best thinking with a club in my hand. Yes? Mr. Van Meeren is here to see you, Sir John. We ought to start charging him rent. Show him in. Good morning. Morning, I thought you were in the Italian office. Not at the moment. Has your man traced the two companies which bought land? No, not yet. Give him time. I understand from Luke's office that he came back yesterday. Why, well, he forgot his razor. Oh, 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 come on, you can do better than that. He had a very important meeting to attend, but he went back to Italy this morning. Which reminds me that I have a meeting at the NEB. Caswell has found a tame professor. Don't worry, Hendrick. I shall keep you informed. I'm not worrying. I have friends in Switzerland who look into the matter for me. They were cabled today. Well, I wish them the very best of luck. They are experts. Luck doesn't come into it. Bye, Kenneth. See you tomorrow. He seems extremely unconcerned with anything I can tell him. Mm, never told it, John. Has Wilder money of his own? My dear Van Buren, how would I know? Uh, some, certainly. Proceeds of golden handshakes, mostly. I think he does know the companies. If he does, and if he's involved, he'll lose his share of the consortium. Ah, don't start counting your share. Not yet. And I'm telling you that I shall do anything I think fit with my own money. Spend it, throw it away, or invest it. Not when the investment is likely to crucify me, you won't. Oh, John, it can't possibly affect you. Won't you get it into your mind that Van Meeren is a nasty little suspicious Dutchman with a balance sheet in one hand and a Bible in the other? The slightest inkling that I've used inside information for personal gain, he'll tear up every contract in sight. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him you know nothing about it. Ah! And you think he'd believe you? Or rather, his lawyers? No, this is not a sub-clause of the Married Women's Property Act. 
It's the top end of a 50 million pound consortium. So you climb off your county high horse and tell me all about it. Very well. It's a Liechtenstein company. I own 20% of it. Charles Granger says I stand to make about 10,000 pounds. What has Charles Granger got to do with it? He owns the other 80%. Oh, no. It's all perfectly legal. I thought it was rather clever. You and Charles Granger. Me, nicely wrapped up for Van Meeren to cart away and dump. Why? will not be treated as a scullery maid asking for an advance. Oh. It was my own money. Part of the capital that you've relied on in the past to make commercial risk. And may do in the future. What future? Yours or mine? I'm not a Victorian chattel, a mindless warming pan. Yes, I've made money. You don't have the monopoly on turning a profit. And with your record of risks, you may be very glad of a cushion to land on when they kick the ladder away from underneath you. And with your penchant for affairs, I may be very glad of a nest egg for my solitary old age. You're compounding the risk for me. Don't you see that? You thought you'd provide a nest egg. Very wifely. Charles gave me his word. Damn Charles! I want him at my office at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I explain to him, plead with him, get him there. I'm just going to the Dutch consulate and then I'm going to see Don Henderson. And if anybody phones, they most certainly will. You don't know where I've gone or when I've been back. I have absolutely no idea. His engagement book is blank and I have not heard from him since this morning. You must know. Where's Wilder? I have already explained to Mr. Van Meeren that Sir John is unobtainable. All right, Miss Lingard, I'll see to it. Thank you. I have just received this cable from Switzerland. It provides conclusive proof that Wilder has direct contact with two companies which bought land required by the consortium. This, under the terms of his contract, invalidates his position as an officer of the consortium and the position of his company within it. What did you do that for? You probably lost it. With the state of your fortunes, you can afford a few lost golf balls. What fortune? A Swiss-based company buying Italian land. Oh, that. Yes, Don. I want to know about it. I thought you might, sooner or later. Well? I'm afraid I can't tell you. You'd better. I fired one speculator, you could be the next. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. I intend to find out about it, Don. I remember Corbett telling me that. More than once. All right, then. Cover up. Be stupid. But remember one thing. When you and your friends try to sell that land, a reasonable profit is one thing, but highway robbery is another. Anyone who forgets that is liable to lose his shirt. Old Chinese proverb. Man with no shirt, happy man. No laundry problem. Yes, but in grave danger of catching pneumonia. All right, John, I'll pass the message on. You'll do much better than that. I want you and anyone else concerned in this land grabbing in my office at quarter to ten tomorrow. No, no, kiddies, I'm afraid I don't know where John is or when he'll be back. I've had three phone calls from Van Meeren and two more from some strange lawyer and I've told them all exactly the same thing. I just don't know where John is. All right, Tim. Yes, yes. All right, goodbye. Our friend Van Meeren sounds a very persistent fellow with a swift recourse to the law. John says Van Meeren lives in contracts like a termite lives in cheese. Very useful. 
if he's on your side. You'll be there tomorrow, won't you? Oh, yeah. I may be a little late, but I'll be there. Good morning, Sir John. Morning. Any word from Mr. Luke? No, not yet, but I told reception to send up any cables immediately. Get Mr. Henderson for me. He's not in. Why? His secretary just rang through to find out if he was here. Hmm. And, uh, Mr. Van Meeren is here again. Uh. Good morning, John. Oh, not just now, Caswell. I'm very, very busy. Oh, I understood you wanted to see me. Why? According to Don Henderson. Oh. You want to buy some land in Italy. What's your offer? Top. The right land. Oh, yes. 50,000. Accepted. Plus an explanation of how you got into it. I'm a civil engineer, John. I made a living from plans and maps and moving earth. Land was bought, but I thought the consortium would go. I was right. And Don? Don has some Italian and um, a little time to spare. You ditched us with the consortium. You realize that, don't you, on the personal interest clause? I can read contracts. Look at the deeds. I thought of it, Don Henderson negotiated it, but the buyers were Garford University. It's their profit. 45,000. Very handsome. To endow a chair in civil engineering. No personal interest. Don even bought his own fare. Garford University. You're in the clear. I told you I'd get that chair, John. Excuse me, Sir John, but Mr. Granger's here to see you. And uh, Mr. Van Meeren is still waiting. He's getting a little impatient. Send them in. What, both of them? Both of them. Gentlemen. Morning, Charles. Good morning. You know as much as I do and have done for some time, so I won't go into detail. I have made an appointment to see the lawyers to the consortium this afternoon. Your teeth are showing, Hendrik. Put them away. The Swiss company has accepted an offer of 50,000 for their land holdings. The company belongs entirely to Garford University. A reasonable amount. Within the planned appropriation for land. Satisfied? Oh, no. What about your friends in Liechtenstein? You better have a damn good story, Charles. I'd rather not tell it. I must insist. I find all insistence boring, unnecessary. And a little vulgar. Don't insist with me. I'll take 50,000 pounds for these. That brings you to the consortium limit of 100,000 for phase one consortium spending. There, gentlemen. And who do we pay it to? The accountant, please. Lady Wilders. Part of it. 20%. Not an unreasonable negotiating fee. The balance, if you can read, goes to a trust fund on behalf of Signor Eduardo Contini. You don't expect a politician of his calibre to work for nothing, do you? So your friend Contini gets his kick back after all. And we're back where we started. Not quite. You're still culpable. Your wife's 20%. Expose her. You expose Contini. And we've lost everything. Read today's Italian newspapers. You must be very proud of Lady Wilder's shrewdness. It's a matter for speculation. Let's just leave it at that, huh? <laughs> 